So you're probably all familiar with Cartesian coordinates in which space is filled with sort of graph-like coordinate grid kind of like this. And if we have a point sitting right here, then we can represent the position of that point by coordinates, x and y. So you go out, you measure how far your point is this way and call that x. You measure how far your point is up and you call that y. And my coordinates of this point are x and y. Now if you want to write that position in terms of a vector like we do in mechanics, what you do is you define a vector like so. It's a straight line that starts off the origin and goes to the point. And then you say that that position vector, I'll call it r, is a distance x in the i hat direction plus y in the j hat direction, where i and j are defined as usual in this case the horizontal and vertical directions respectively. Now if this position is moving in time, then it's possible to write the velocity of this particle simply as a time derivative of position. And if we want to write that out in coordinates, it's just going to be x dot in the i direction plus y dot in the j hat. This just comes from the fact that velocity is a time derivative of position, and to take the time derivative of position, you just take the time derivative of the components. And finally, we can write the last piece, that we can write the acceleration in terms of the time derivative of velocity. And if we write that into components, it's the second time derivative. Piece of cake, right? So now what we're going to do is move to polar coordinates. In this case, I my graph paper has these circles on it and some radial lines outward from the origin. And let's say my point of interest is, is right there. Now just like in Cartesian coordinates, I'm going to represent my point, or the location of my point, by two numbers. And so Cartesian coordinates is x and y. Now I'm going to use r and theta. So r is the distance this point is outward from the origin. This is a scalar r, not my vector r over there. And theta is this angle right here that this point makes relative to the horizontal. And just like before, I can represent this, this point as a vector. So I'll call this vector r, just like before. And I can write r equals, hmm, how am I going to do this? I want to write it in terms of, of scalar r, this radius and the theta. Instead of using basis vectors i and j, I want to use basis vectors that are appropriate for this polar coordinate system. So I'm going to define basis vectors like I've shown here. One basis vector is radially outward, and I'm going to call that e hat r. And the other vector is perpendicular to that, and I'm going to call that e hat theta. So e hat theta is defined to be perpendicular to r and in the direction of increasing theta. So I've defined theta as this angle relative to horizontal, and the bigger theta gets, the more this point is along this way. So e hat theta points in that same direction as increasing theta. Now when I ask students to write out the position vector in terms of its components, I often get uh, answers that look like this. Or we can write it with a cosine and a sine. Or we can say the position vector is just the distance r in the e hat r direction, period. And I often get this response as well. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop the video in just a second and tell me which one of these is right, or maybe none of these are right, or make up your own that seems a lot more rational. But tell me what you think this position vector should be. And then you can start it up again. We'll talk about it. So the most common responses I get for this question is, is the, are these first two answers here. What I'd like to do is, is start with that one right there. And let's look what it says. I have r cosine theta. What is that? Well, there's your r, there's your theta. So r cosine theta should be this distance right there, the projection onto that horizontal axis. And then r sine theta is going to be projection onto the vertical axis. So that's that distance right there. Now, the only problem with this is that I've got r cosine in the e hat r direction. So I've got this distance right here but all of that is in the e hat r direction. So here's how much I get in e hat r direction, r cosine theta right there. And then what I have to do is add r sine theta in the e hat theta direction. So there's the r cosine theta e hat r, and then r sine theta e hat theta would be more or less that way. So the sum of these two vectors, right? That's what we're saying. Here's this, this vector plus that vector, the sum of these two vectors is something this way. That's clearly not right. My original r vector was this way, right? This is what I want. So that's looking ridiculous. Notice my position vector is all in the e hat r direction, right? There is no component in the e hat theta direction. And it's a distance r in the e hat r direction. 
So the correct answer is this one right here. So if my particles right here where I've shown it, e hat r and e hat theta, are as I've drawn them. But if my point is out here, where's e hat r and e hat theta now? Well, e hat r and e hat theta would be over here. e hat r radially outward again, right? Directly from the origin coming out along the radius. e hat theta perpendicular to e hat r, pointing in the direction of increasing theta. So e hat r and e hat theta move along with the point. Notice that e hat r is a basis vector that depends upon theta. Similarly, e hat theta also depends upon theta. So depending upon what theta is, e hat r and e hat theta are pointing in. So what do you think? Does it make sense that my position vector is just r in the e hat r direction? So the challenge now is we need to write velocity and we need to write acceleration in terms of what? We need to write them in terms of r. Looks neat. This r, theta, r dot, theta dot, r double dots, and theta double dots. And we want to write it in terms of, of the e hat r and e hat theta as well. I just noticed that I made a mistake over here. It's supposed to be e hat r. So let me show you this thing I call the roto tool. It's, I can get this big wheel to spin around like so, and then I can move this guy in and out along this thing. And if I think of, of this little red dot as my particle, notice and as it's moving around, notice what's happening. I've got a little e hat r and e hat theta here. e hat r is always radially outward pointing directly at the red dots. e hat theta is pointing in the direction of, of increasing theta, which is the same way I, I drew it in the diagram just a little while ago. Of course, I can get the big, can get the big wheel to spin the other way as well. In this case, theta dot is negative rather than positive. But I can dream up some rather elaborate motions here. But let me start off with a very simple motion. I'll keep the big wheel fixed and just move uh, this mass in and out. That light blue arrow you see there, that's the velocity vector. And as I move this thing in and out, you can see the velocity changing accordingly. Now, if I think about that mo simple motion in Cartesian coordinates rather than polar coordinates, what's going on? I just have this object moving horizontally, right? Left and right, nothing up and down. So again, looking, this, looking at this in Cartesian coordinates, the velocity would simply be x dot in the i hat direction. I would have nothing in the j hat direction because it is just moving horizontally. So x dot in the i hat direction. But if I go to polar coordinates, what does this look like? So in polar coordinates, notice that the our i hat direction is the same as the e hat r direction. So my velocity just looks like an r dot in the e hat r direction. Velocity here looks like r dot e hat r. And what if I have my big wheel oriented a little bit differently? So now the, the thing I, the mass slides upon is not oriented horizontally anymore. Now it's at some angle. Now it's my velocity. Well, I think you can see, I hope you can see that the velocity is still in the e hat r direction, right? And it's still r dot in the e hat r direction. So this expression that we just wrote over here, velocity r dot in the e hat r direction, I think still holds when, when my system is like this too, right? So r dot equals e hat r works here. It worked when it was horizontal. It's looking pretty, pretty general. So I think I'm liking this expression I have for velocity. But wait a second. What if I have a situation like this? Check out what's going on here. R in this case is constant. I'm at a fixed radius. Radius is not changing, but now the big wheel's changing, right? So what's happening is this, this mass here, this particle, it's just moving around in a perfect circle, right? Now what can we say about the velocity? The velocity again is this, is this blue arrow. In which direction is it in? It's not in the e hat r direction. In fact, it's perpendicular to the e hat r direction. Instead, it's in the e hat theta direction, perfectly aligned with the e hat theta direction. As we've said, as we've discovered before, the velocity vector is tangent to the path. In this case, the path is a perfect circle, and we're always tangent to the circle. So if we go back and rethink our velocity, it looks as though I'm going to need another term that's in the e hat theta direction. And here's a nice little question for you. Can we figure out what belongs here? So let's do a little experiment here, a thought experiment. 
in which we investigate this case that I'm showing. Let's suppose the radius is a constant 3 meters, and furthermore this thing's rotating at a rate of a quarter or 0 0.25 revolutions per second. So what do you think? Here, This distance right here is 3 meters, we're saying, and we're going around 1 quarter revolution per second. It looks like my simula looks like my simulation is going a little slower than a quarter revolution per second, but those are the numbers we're going to stick with. So given this, tell me, what is the velocity? Stop the video and work it out for me. So in this case, velocity would be what? Well, if I go back to my picture, look what I'm doing. I'm doing one complete revolution in every four seconds, right? So quarter revolution per second or one revolution per four seconds. And what is one revolution? In one revolution we cover one complete circumference of the circle. The circle has a radius of three meters so it has a circumference of uh, two times pi times r, so six pi meters. So I'm traveling six pi meters every four seconds and this is in the e hat theta direction. And that's my answer for this very specific case. Now let me tell you a way of writing this in terms of r and theta, or rather in terms of r and theta dots. So I'm going to write this as r theta dots. So here's my expression for velocity that I just give you, but does this coincide with what I have here? So in this example I have r is 3 meters, and what's theta dot? If I, rep if I measure theta dot in terms of radians per second, then theta dot is a quarter revolution. So 2 pi is a full revolution, but I'm dividing by 4 because it's a quarter revolution. So that would be in radians per second. And that's exactly what I had before, right? Six, two time, or 3 times 2 pi is 6 pi, and then dividing by 4, and it's in meters per second. So this is exactly the same thing. Now what I've done for you, although I didn't derive it rigorously, I, ra I rather derived it through example, but I've derived this expression for velocity. Velocity is r dot in the e hat r direction plus r theta dot in the e hat theta direction. So now we have mathematical expressions for velocity and polar coordinates. Let me pause it right here. So we see the e hat r component of velocity right here. We unpause, we have that whenever r is changing, right? So when r is shrinking, the e hat r component of velocity is inward. When, when r is growing, the e hat r component of velocity is outward. So that's r dot e hat r. And then this piece right here is my e hat theta component. Again, the farther I am out, it's r theta dot. The farther I am out, the bigger it is. When I'm really close in, that e hat theta component of velocity is nearly zero, but it grows, as I said, as the farther I get out. And of course, it also it also depends upon theta dot. So if I if I slow down my big ring, I change it that way as well. And again, the the purpose of this exercise is to get an intuition, get a feel for for what these components of velocity are. In the next video, we're going to do the same thing, but with acceleration.